Hi, this is still the last slide. We're still talking about education. Yes, all the major coalition, semua gabungan-gabungan parti yang besar itu ada bercakap tentang pendidikan dalam manifesto mereka. Tetapi adakah hanya pada atasnya saja atau mendasari? That's what we're talking about here and we have established that in the first block. But now in the second last block, I'm just going to go straight to it. What are the perceptions out there? Kalau tanya majikan, dia kata, oh, Kualiti yang keluar ni semua kita kena ajar. Di sekolah tak ajar ke di universiti yang pergi apa yang dia dapat bila sini we have to train them all over again. So that's one perspective. The other perspective ha? cakap bahasa Malaysia. Tak betul cakap bahasa Inggeris. Tak betul kita dengar semua ni dan dengan media sosial dia bagaikan gendang di palu kerana it amplifies. It might not be empirical. It might not be research based. But social media gema. The resounding waves that comes back. So now, I'm glad I have two great persons uh, to talk about this. So I'm just going to go straight to you. The fact that there's room for Teach for Malaysia to operate within the education system means our education system needed that help. Otherwise, TFM will be irrelevant. So coming from that juncture to dispel some of the perceptions that may be out there, I'm going to uh, repeat the same question I asked you before, but maybe in a more practical sense. If people say that, see, that's why we need Teach for Malaysia, because our education system is not good enough, what would you say to that? Well, Teach for Malaysia is, well, first off, I think where I'd start is um, the McKinsey Research on Education System Improvements talks about this idea that the quality of an education system can never exceed the quality of its teachers. Um, and I think the Ministry of Education has been working really hard to invest in teacher quality um, across uh, the last 10 plus, well, since the beginning of time, right? Um, and the Ministry of Education recognizes that there is a need to improve the quality of teachers and to support teachers as well. And so Teach for Malaysia was really started off as, it's, it's a partnership between um, the NGO Teach for Malaysia and the Ministry of Education uh, itself. Um, so we're not sort of separate from the ministry. It's actually a Ministry of Education effort to improve quality of education. Having said that, I've also looked at other models like trust school by Kazana, you know? At one time, they needed about one million a year to run trust school. And one of the first empowerment given was they select the Guru Besar Pengetua, then that Guru Besar Pengetua, then select teachers. And of course, trust school having that resource will pick the best of the teachers around. But that model will not be sustainable across the more than 10,000 schools that we have. So that's my point back to the quality. If we do that, then what about the other schools? Yeah, so I think the trust school model specifically was designed as, if you can think of it as a, as a lighthouse model, right? Can we show or create proof points about what works in education? So if you enabled a school leader to, be, uh, to, to pick the best school leader and you enabled that school leader to pick the teachers who are going to achieve the vision that they had together, would that work, right? And so it shows that actually, um, if you allow that empowerment to happen, could you then allow other schools as well to have that empowerment as well? That being said, the trust schools didn't have the extent to the autonomy that we think we think it uh, it, it does but have. Just focusing on the quality of teachers, they yeah. get to select. Yeah, many to other an schools extent, do not have to that an luxury. extent. Right? Yes. So, tapi kok mana pun kalau cakap bahasa orang kampus, kok mana pun, no matter how we slice it, it goes back to the teacher quality. Prof, no long prof. Teacher quality ni okay. linked up dengan supporting quality, sub support okay. tu, support tu. Sistem buku. sokongan, keseluruhan. So, 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 pertama sekali okay. buku teks. Okay. Semua guru pakai buku teks, semua murid pakai buku teks, yeah. buku kerja. Kalau itu yang kurang yeah. baik, guru baik pun melebih. Guru baik susah lagi. Okay. Terutama je kalau dia nak buat ujian berdasarkan chapter, bab okay. ni, bab ni, bab ni. Jadi ah. kalau ikut contoh yang Prof bagi ah. tentang buku Inggeris. Okay. Tentu. Talk out. Talk. Okay. Could be out. And... Of course, we have alternative. Okay. The point is, we have alternative, and we have research on that okay. to do the alternative ways. So, we don't have a penyelesaian. 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 We don't have ada keperbagaian buku teks. Katalah ada lima buku teks. Okay. You pilih ikut keadaan. Ini berdasarkan apa? Modul apa? 
macam mana digunakan dan sebagainya. Lebih senang. Sebenarnya sekarang saya perhatikan lebih mudah je kalau kita buat buku yang seperti nanti solat tu. Orang belajar sendiri pun boleh. Dia belajar dengan kawan pun boleh. Atau belajar dengan bantuan guru pun boleh. Maka dengan itu tidaklah terikat sangat. Buku buku teks atau buku tu hanya modul tu hanya satu garis-garis-garis untuk dia, dia belajar sendiri. Ya. Kalau begitu halnya, maka dengan itu tidaklah ter, di, bergantung sangat dengan satu one size fits all. Ya. Sama ada buku teks saja ataupun buku apa ni okay. buku online. Ya. Untuk masa saya nak lompat terus tapi ada hubungannya dengan PKP atau MCO. Nak tak nak waktu ya. itu siapa pun tak boleh keluar rumah kecuali tertentu ya. dan kita terpaksa belajar secara tak bersemuka dan ya. terpisah ya. yang mana tidak pernah berlaku dalam ya. sejarah pendidikan Betul. negara Malaysia. Jadi bila sistemnya tidak bersedia tetapi terpaksa bergerak ke situ jadi banyak benda kita nampak, banyak kepincangan ya. sama ada ada akses sama ada ada peranti. Ya. Kalau pun ada akses ada peranti ada beza mengajar saya kat sini, murid saya semua duduk rumah masing-masing. Bila saya kata diam, dia orang dengar ke tidak contohnya. Jadi, saya nak pergi ke Prof dulu, before I go to you. Macam mana Prof tengok that lost generation? Yeah. Ramai orang tengok lost generation. Ya, yeah, it's called learning loss at the kececiran. Tentu sekali, bila belajar dengan komputer, dengan screen depan, budak tak boleh ikut guru. Sebiji-sebiji. Dan juga dia sendiri selalu ada distraction pada tu nak main ke dulu sebagainya. Dan kalau kita ikut berdasarkan buku teks saja, budak kalau tak dapat ikut itu, saya tinggal lah. Kita rasa macam dia macam ada tak tak biasa dengan cara begitu. Oleh kerana dia nak cara guru, dia nak. Dia nak. Jadi kalau itu berlaku, ada learning loss for two years. Sama ada dalam kata lah literasi. Dia tak, budak itu tak boleh baca, tak boleh menulis. Dua tahun dia tak pergi sekolah, mana dia tak akan boleh baca dengan dengan lancar. Faham, lancar dengan boleh faham tu bahasa Inggeris, bahasa Melayu, agama kan, matematik kan, biasa asas ni. Kalau kumulatif, kalau dia lemah di peringkat bawah ni, dia kumulatif ni. Berganda lah. Berganda lah. Sampai dengan uh, PMR ke orang okay. pergi, kita teruk lah sampai SPM. Sekarang ni exam dah tak ada. Lagi teruk. Jadi ke, kelemahan itu akan ber, ber, berterusan. berterusan. Bukan saja elektrisi, kalau dia uh, POM 1, POM 2. Tak ada asas juga. Macam mana nak bagi sains? Proses setiap tahun ada berapa? 450 ribu hingga ke 500 ribu yang akan ambil perpisahan SPM. Kalau kita ambil ya, ya. purata itu, ya, ya. kalau dua tahun, dua generasi, ya. dah hampir sejuta sebenarnya. Ya, memang. Sejuta. Jadi kenapa tak ada secara langsung perancangan ini dalam mana-mana manifesto? Kerana ini jumlah ya. besar. Ya. Ya, salah satunya saya, saya tulis macam saya kata, first thing you should do now, lepas daripada dua tahun yang learning loss tu, beri ujian dulu di mana mereka berada. Lainan untuk setengah tu bagus dalam bahasa Melayu kerana dia ada rumah ada orang Melayu bantu dia tapi lemah dalam bahasa Inggeris. Okay. Matematik juga mungkin baik okey tapi tak boleh. Maka kita kena adjust pemulihan itu. Okay. Learning loss tadi untuk berlainan murid, Jadi, berlainan dia subjek. Dia ada tindakan ha, untuk tapi membantu. kita tak boleh buat sama yang itu semua. Okay. Tapi kita bagilah panduan untuk IQ, untuk bahasa Inggeris macam ni. Untuk bahasa Inggeris macam ni ataupun untuk uh, matematik macam ni. Dengan itu, kita ada flexibility. Ha. Patutnya pada masa itu ada flexibility. Siapa nak mengajar boleh, siapa nak bantu boleh. Bawa kemudian ke sekarang ni, kita buka. Flexibility ada juga. Kerana learning loss sekarang berlaku. Maka dengan pemulihan itu, dengan itu kita dapat satu satu budaya baru lah. You respect children's differences. Yeah. The first principle is to know that they are different to for different subjects. Yeah. 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 Kalau bahasa Inggeris, hmm. pergi uh, okay. kumpulan bahasa Inggeris. Okay. Kalau yang dia lemah sikit. Okay. Kalau yang baik bahasa Melayu, pergi bahasa Melayu dulu. Jadi dia tak sama daripada kita tak boleh umur sama tapi okay. berlainan. Okay. Bagi saya, ability base is more important than uh, age base. Yeah. Ya, dengan itu kita dapat uh, membantu hmm. mereka berkembang dan juga belajar dengan lebih yakin dan lebih solo. Saudara Chan Sun Seng, these are deep, deep issues. I myself had a, a son who had to wait more than two years practically for his SPM. Uh, we're not even talking about mental stress. Hmm. right? We're just talking about whether they can continue studying. Sambung belajar, tak apalah kat rumah, kat mana, you belajarlah. Tak apa orang kerja, you belajar. But this all place in their mind, their fear of COVID, what about their peers? Rakan sebaya adalah penting kerana dia boleh membantu 
sama-sama menangkung uh, ketegangan dan pemikiran. So, how do you look at this? Because when I look at all the manifestos, there's one manifesto that touches on lost innovation, but if the political forces are listening, what would you say to them? Because apparently it's not constructive enough in the manifesto. Yeah. So, but this is a real important issue because nearly 900,000 to 1 million uh, Malaysians, we need to help them. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I really agree with what Prof was saying, right? I think that first, we need to empower teachers to be able to make choices that meet the needs of their students. The reality is that when schools reopened and everyone went back into school, teachers ha have kind of are in this mode because they've been trained or, or it's been ingrained in them that they have to teach the curriculum or the syllabus yeah, according to the level. So what we've literally seen is that children in standard four, they came into school in standard one before the pandemic. They lost two years of learning. They're back in standard four. They've forgotten how to read and write, how to do basic math, but they're being taught the standard four curriculum. So I totally agree with Prof that we need to, number one, empower teachers to be able to do diagnostics, to understand where their students really are. And then we need to give them the freedom to be able to make choices in how they plan their lessons to meet the needs of their students. And it cannot be what we've seen in some of the manifestos is that it's going to be um, a program that we're going to do on the side. It cannot be an additional program that you do on the side. You need to empower the teachers the in the classrooms itself to be able to meet the needs of their students. And the ministry has you know, begun to take steps towards this. I think that, that we see the removal of the UPSR and the PT3 as positive things, but the reality is when we talk about quality of teachers, teachers do not have the adequate support that they need to be able to deliver education in this exam abolished uh, system. And you know, to Prof's point about the budget, we, uh, the majority of the budget is spent on teachers' salaries. It's the largest ministry in the country. Of course, the budget is the largest. But the amount of money that we spend on professional development for teachers is Very tiny. Good. In 2017, I think the one study that was done showed that we spend 25 ringgit a year on oh, per teacher in Malaysia versus obviously you can't compare to Singapore, but Singapore spends seven thousand two hundred dollars. Singapore spends seven thousand two hundred dollars versus our twenty five ringgit on teacher professional development. Say, if a PTD officer can be sent to the Harvard Learning course that costs berpuluh kalau tak beratus ribu for a few weeks in Harvard, why can't we increase the twenty five ringgit to two hundred fifty ringgit? So how do you look at what you're about to know? Actually, the, the, the first study about the exam is yeah. set up to you. Okay. Now, the current like, the exam, they, they pack a bell shirt. Bell shirt, you, you the you ranking, the the ranking, yeah. ranking, yeah. ranking. Yeah. You ambit exam, but to the rank. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Siapa yang tu bagus? Anak, anak, you kata lah, third. Okay, not so good, okay. good. good. Ni ada yang nak, nak, dia 29 ke 30 kan? Ranking. I say, for, forget the word, forget the word. What we need is to call standard base. Okay. Standard tiga, that is called standard base. They should be able to read and write. Now, how that is standard? Any time you can take, you take the exam. Uh, you can if you can perform that. That means you are already level that level. You may take uh, one year or two years different rate of learning because if you are very bula uh, dengan Undah, maka lama sikit lah. Oh, maaf, tapi zaman saya kecil dulu, ada kelas nama kelas ekspres. Apa yang ah, itu, tak apa, dia, itu, dia naik atas. Uh, dia, tak itu, maksud saya, adalah siapa yang pandai pergilah dulu. Yang, dulu. Tapi yang lain saya tu duduk lah. Bukan saya, bukan hmm. saya automatik semua. Hmm. Untuk bahasa Inggeris, dia lemah bahasa Inggeris, dia lama sikit. Tapi untuk bahasa Melayu, dia sudah pandai, dia dia tanggal dia, dia tahap dua. Okay. Uh, jadi dengan itu, dia berlainan kelas lah sebab tu. Kelas tu ada berlainan. So, pentaksiran berasaskan tahap, bukan berasaskan ah, satu tak ada, tak, tak ada purata begitu. Hmm. Bilik nak mengajar pun, bilik bahasa Inggeris, semua lengkap dengan bahasa Inggeris. Bilik, bilik apa dia panggil, lab lah. Uh, I'm not throwing slogans, but there nah. is this thing called outcome-based learning. Is that nah, it? No, 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 no. It's not outcome-based saja hmm. begitu. Hmm. It's not simply, simply hmm. like that. You hmm. must be like that. But, kata you nak udun tahun tiga, dia boleh buat ni. Uh, tu tahun satu buat ni. Tapi, sama tu, dia buat apa, buat lah. Dia, nak, dia sendiri nak buat, mengikut tu, tapi akhirnya dia, dia boleh buat tu. Uh, but uh, to do that, the, the ecosystem has got to accommodate that. Yeah. To give yeah. enough attention to one student. If you have no, one no, student, no, 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 no. 
a group of students. Sorry. I know, but if there's 40 in a class, do you have time to rate everyone according to their ability? So actually, I mean, what, what Prof is talking about, this, the school-based assessment system that the ministry has implemented aspires to do that, okay. um, where there are curriculum standards um, for a specific grade level, and students are assessed on a progressive, on a formative basis, Understood. on a progressive basis, yeah. where they have to show mastery of a certain uh, curriculum Skills standard or, or a certain or skill, and there are different levels from one to six. And um, they can do that, well, in, in, the, in the philosophy Idea of it, they can do it at their own pace. Yeah. And the teachers can cater to the differentiated needs of their students um, because they are using that data to be able to inform them how to, to differentiate their instruction. Yeah. So there is the system that the ministry has aspires to do that. The reality is, like I said, teachers aren't fully prepared to be able to implement that system. And because can you imagine, if you imagine for yourself as a teacher, maybe you trained uh, to be a teacher 20 years ago and you've taught in a certain way for 20 years. And now you're being asked to do something drastically different in your classroom. I think it's very unfair to, I mean, you know, sometimes we complain a lot about teachers and I think it's very unfair to, um, expect teachers to do things that they aren't trained to do, right? And oftentimes what we see in Malaysia is that the, the best teachers out there, they're going above and beyond traditional expectations. They're learning by themselves. They're putting their own money into their professional yeah. development. Yeah. They're buying their own, uh, during MCO laptops, data for their students. Um, and so the, the norm isn't that you're set up for success. The, the teachers who do really well, they're going above and beyond what is provided for them. So we don't enable our teachers to deliver the system that we've designed uh, for them. There needs to be more freedom for the teacher to do. The thing that I visit schools. Okay. Yeah. Fair from right. If you take form two, you've got form two A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The first three, Okay, they can do it. But you go to the last, you do a test based on the same test they can read or they can do. Okay. So therefore, there should be differentiated teaching approaches for the thing. It doesn't mean that one-to-one. -one. It means that this class of, let's say, two classes, you've got to be different. And we have done also this. We have done it. So it's a question of not, bukan tak boleh buat, tak boleh buat. Dah pernah dibuat pun. The question, not, Laksanakan bagaimana itu kita boleh apa yang large kan lah. Hakikatnya Amin. tidak ada laksanakan. Jadi orang yang nak terima tu nak tempoh tu itu bukan minister tu kadang-kadang pegawai di tengah pertengahan ni di some mid level ni ketua bahagian ke apa apa ini ketua bahagian lah pengarah. Ya. Mereka ni yang kita perlu yakinkan mereka ini boleh dilaksanakan. Kena kita bawa dia orang tengok macam mana. Dengan itu mereka dah boleh yakin baru lah nak ubah. Nak ubah tu Sistem kita ni ISO type, you know, nak ubah sikit tu pun, nak kena ubah tu. Okay. It's not the flexible system. Itu yang saya rasa terlalu ketat dia punya... Kalau saya ambil semua manifesto, dia saya tengah tengok satu-satu tentang yeah. pendidikan. Dia tak menyentuh sampai ke situ. Yang ada nak bagi berapa puluh juta, nak letak internet, laju dekat sekolah, uh, dana untuk sekolah tafiz, untuk recognize UEC, fair allocation to sekolah vernacular, sekolah jenis kebiasaan, apa juga sekolah uh, dan sebagainya. Dia tak masuk ke sini. I know it's, it's sometimes manifesto cannot have everything, but at least an aspiration to look at this thing. Isn't that your expectation of whoever that goes to form government? Absolutely. And so I think that if we look across all the manifestos, there's very little or almost or, or nothing with regards to teacher quality. And, you know, what, what Prof was saying earlier about when, I, when you think about quality of education, you want to look at three key things, right? Number one, what Prof was saying was uh, the, the, the curriculum, right? The content that's being taught. Number two um, is teacher ability to deliver teacher quality. And then number three is student engagements. Can student engagement, can students engage in that quality? Do they have access to those things? And so this is this concept's called the instructional core that the Harvard Graduate School of Education uses. If we're not looking at the instructional core um, and those three things, then we're not really going to change the quality of education. Just to be clear, uh, um, Prof, di universiti kita melahirkan guru, right? Yeah. Okay. So, di universiti mereka dididik dengan semua yang kita bincangkan yeah. tadi. Masalahnya bila dia keluar, dia tak boleh nak buat tu, kena kita tengok, eh, dia orang buat macam lain. Uh, macam yeah, tu. Ya, yeah. sistem dia orang tu dah ketat macam tu. Contohnya kalau kita nak ajar 
Ibu sejarah lah ataupun bahasa Melayu okay. pun. Kita ada bab satu, dua, tiga. Ikut bab dia ada dia punya timeline tu. Yeah. Minggu ni, minggu tu. Kebanyakan lah. Jadi dia tak ikut jasakan kepada kelas ni kita boleh buat bab tujuh lah. Mana dia okay. laju sikit. Okay. Flexibility ni. Lepas tu dia exam. Sekolah exam tu satu sekolah tu satu exam. Padahal we should be different time you can take different exam. For the, they call it standard base. Standard base bukan sama untuk semua untuk tiap tahun, tiap-tiap semester. Dia berlain. Saya ada buat semua kajian-kajian tentang kata untuk perkara ini. Perkara begini. Ujian-ujian diagnostik, ujian pemulihan semua ini. Dia buat untuk membaca menulis saya. Faham. Buat. Maka dengan itu, bila kita masuk, saya masuk dalam kelas itu, budak itu tahu. Pelajar saya lah. Ataupun saya konsultan sebuah negara. Sebuah negara. I don't mean in Montenegro. I was konsultan. Saya masuk itu, Uh, saya kata kita buat ujian dulu, buat ujian berdasarkan. Dia pasti bawa mereka tu tiga puluh peratus lagi tak sampai apa tahap tu. Okay. Saya kata tak apa, masuk. Kita buat dalam masa tiga minggu, tiga uh, hari, tiga puluh tegu. Kita buat semula. Kita, uh, tunjuk macam mana, tunjuk, mengajar macam mana pedagogi tadi, kerikulum tu macam mana buat. You balik, you buat. Berdasarkan itu, you uji. Mula, mula dengan kata level dua mereka ni. Kemudian esok balik dalam masa sebulan lagi saya datang balik lab beberapa minggu sampai. You buat laporan. Mereka dapati bahawa budak tu laju. Berdasarkan kepada cara lah kaedah tu. Mereka laju. Kemudian mereka lapor lah. Lapor kepada orang-orang yang besar ni. Orang yang buat polisi, polisi ni. Mereka cikgu sendiri cerita kita buat macam ni. Tak susah pun. Cikgu kerja tak banyak. Kita tak isi, tak isi borang banyak-banyak. Itu dia tuan kan. Itu macam kerja kan. Less lepas pun, oh, simple, tik saja, ni tik saja, tak payah dulu isi borang-borang tu. Kalau begitu kerja cikgu, lebih banyak masa dia melayan guru, melayan murid dan membantu murid. Roda tu terus berjalan, ya. sama ada masalah yang diselesaikan atau tidak. So dia akan berikutan, mereka akan naik ke peringkat lebih tinggi dan naik pelajar ni akan naik ke peringkat lebih tinggi. So soalan saya adalah, ketika semua ini, dengan tekanan untuk melihat perkara macam ranking atau kedudukan dunia lah. Sama ada PISA ke apa ke kalau uh, pengajian tinggi, they have the time higher education, the QS dan sebagainya. Dan ini digunakan untuk mendapatkan uh, pelajar. Uh, jadi, tapi kalau saya tengok jumlah yang ibu bapa di Lembah Kelang belanjakan untuk tuition ribuan ringgit dan sanggup menghantar sampai ke 10 malam. Walaupun jauh, syahalah pergi ke Lumpur ke yeah. dan sebagainya. Okay, tentang PISA. Hmm. Ranking PISA dengan sebelum ini ada team. T-I-M-M-S, team. Kita masuk dalam team tahun 1999. Kemudian lagi sekali kita masuk pula uh, 2003. Masa itu, 2009, uh, 1999 dan 2003 kita matematik. Ranking kita di Malaysia, top 10. Top 10. Eh, Singapore was about number 3, kita top 10. Top 10. Kemudian kita datang buat PPSMI. Mengajar bahasa Inggeris atau sains dan matematik dalam bahasa Inggeris. Untuk sekolah kebangsaan, sekolah menengah kebangsaan. Jadi sekolah Tino tak buat. Sekolah Tino. Apa jadi? Dalam masa setahun, kita boleh ikut. Modum tu. Oh, budak tak faham. Budak tak faham diajar dalam bahasa Inggeris. Matematik. Ya, tak faham. Cikgu pun tak faham. Bagus kan? Tak faham. Kita ambil buku tag, dia tak faham. Kita buat ujian tak faham. Saya, saya boleh bagi sedikit data. Terus dia buat. Ya, kita curi masa sikit. Ya, ya. Kalau kita uji dia, ni tahun, tahun, tahun lima, tahun lima, ni dia buat dalam tu 2008. 6 kali 7, yang boleh buat, uh, purata yang boleh buat adalah 74%. Uh, budak Melayu, tak apa kita ambil Melayu sikit, breakdown. 76%, budak Cina 81%, budak orang asli 42%. Okey. Kerana kita bagi 72 bagi dengan 8. Rendah sikitlah sebab bagi ni susah sikit daripada total yang boleh buat 60%. Turun daripada tadi 50% turun. Dan soalan. Kemudian kita kita bagi satu ayat. Which is simple. Yeah. Six pencil costs $2.40. How much does a pencil cost dalam ujian tu? The drop is from tadi 17 uh, 17 5% to 40%. 30% drop. Why? Bahasa. Bahasa. The, the theory bahasa betul-betul. We take a longer, longer, longer bahasa lah. Oh, nanti share ni. 
Pasal kita nak buat grafik supaya betul ah, dia nampak. Dia nampak. Kata. Ya. Ah. Jadi makna dia kita kita buat panjang sikit ayatnya tu. Okey. Tolak tempoh aja. Okay. Lagi teruk. 20, 29%. Okay. Nanti kita akan okay. kita tolong letak grafik. Artinya, ya. problemnya bukan dia tak boleh buat matematik. Tapi, tapi kita menyusah kita. Okay. Kita memberi beban kepada pelajar untuk memahami. Betul? Menyusah. Okay, kita nak habiskan ni, tapi saya nak <laughs> input ataupun pandangan saudara Chan Tun Seng. The pressure of ranking in the world. And politicians love this. Some other way are better off than the rest or not or whatever. So when we look at that from university to school, how do you look at it? I mean, I think the challenge with that is, is what do you do with that information and then how do you take actions based on that, right? So if we just look at the Malaysian education system. For, for years and years, right, it was all about exams, A's, number of A's, and ranking, right? And then you rank kids according to their level and then you put them in the A class and you have the last class. And ultimately, what happens is that when you're playing this game of just trying to get in the ranking, you're, you're not there to make sure that all kids are receiving the education that they need. And what happens is that you then end up focusing on the kids in the top class. Yeah, yeah, not the one that we have. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And so I think that the, the ch if the, that's not to say that assessments and ranking isn't helpful, right? But how do we use that information to reflect and think about how we want to improve instead of how do we beat the Maybe score to each group of students at least to improve to, to improve. for the purpose okay. of improvement and yeah. development so, not habis. evaluation saya nak teruskan diskusi ni sejam lagi kalau boleh tapi saya terpaksa habiskan prof kata-kata akhir kalaulah parti dan ahli parti dan pemimpin parti calon melihat ini apa prof pesanan prof untuk membaiki sistem pendidikan negara mula dengan tahu di mana murid berada kita buat ujian sikit lepas okay. itu bagi dia subjek bila kita baiki Berdasarkan apa yang mereka baik-baik ke berisi. Dalam masa sebulan kita nampak ceria baru. Kemudian baru dia meningkat. Kita tak boleh buat yang atas standard textbook. Terus budak-budak belajar. Budak ada fakta-fakta untuk melakukan ini? Ya, ada. Universiti kita ada kan? Ada. Okay. Prof pun boleh membantu. Boleh. Kan? Kau punya konsultan negara lain? Negara kita lah. Kan? Saya konsultan beberapa negara. Okay. Negara kita macam mana? Ada sikit-sikit. Ah, kena banyak lah Prof. <laughs> Saudara Chan Sin Sin. Dia final few. If you have a chance to tell the political party. Yeah, well, I've got two messages. I think for, for politicians, like we've been discussing this whole time, right? At the end of the day, the quality of an education system does not exceed the quality of its teachers. We need to invest in our teachers. And the second thing is not to politicians, but to members of the public. Um, Teach for Malaysia, we're recruiting our 11th cohort for 2023. Okay. If anyone wants to make a difference in education, I just encourage you uh, go to www.teachfrommalaysia.org, apply for the fellowship, join Teach from Malaysia, and make a difference in the classroom. Untuk orang tua macam saya boleh? Boleh. Terima kasih banyak kepada Prof. I know you guys are very busy, but um, saya nak habiskan dengan ini. Um, saya hanyalah uh, anak perjalanan yang dilahirkan di tepi sawah padi. Bapa saya terpaksa berjalan dengan kasut putihnya di sekeliling leher untuk pergi ke sekolah kerana tidak ada jalan raya. Dan beliau berazam jadi guru untuk mengubah nasib bangsa. Sekolah pertama dia adalah sekolah di Sanglang. Terpaksa sewa belakang kedai runcit. Tak ada rumah sewa pun nak sewa. Because uh, dia itu jauh. Dah hanya anak petani dan nelayan. Dajah lima dia dapat mereka tak tahu ABC atau 123. Jadi dia ambil tin milo, ambil magnet, potong manjalakat dan buat pertandingan memancing kerana mereka rata-rata anak nelayan. Dan bila tarik keluar, keluarlah huruf dan keluarlah angka. Dan beliau memberi cara itu. Itu mungkin tidak dia ajar di MPSI ataupun Universiti Malaya. Itu, minta maaf saya cakap. Sangat menyusahkan cikgu nak kena buat tu sebab padahal ha. kerja Tapi tu mudah ini, aja. Ini tahun 1950-an dan 1960-an. Saya rasa Sekarang kita yang dikurang ke 21 dengan semua yang kita bincangkan bagaimana kita nak bawa ini. Saya tak nampak ini dalam manifesto secara khusus. Oh, itu sebab itu kita bawa perbincangan ini bukan untuk mengkritik tapi untuk pastikan pemimpin seterusnya bagi Malaysia faham sebenarnya masalah pendidikan negara dan bawa aspirasi seperti sepatutnya di kurun ke di kurun ke-21 ini. Sekian, terima kasih sekali lagi kepada Prof dan juga Teach for Malaysia isi borang hantar kepada Chan Sun Seng dan saya pun akan bersama dengan anda. Sekian, terima kasih kepada hanya di Sinar Harian dan Sinar Daily. Last lap.